Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this lesson, we're going to be looking uh, at an introduction to mixture properties for our intermediate thermodynamics course. Our goal in this lecture is simply that we can begin to differentiate between a property for pure components and of mixtures. Let's just start by looking at internal energy. It's one of the many properties we wish to evaluate typically. Let's say we have a mixture of C components. I can have the extensive quantity of U, which is designated just with a capital U, and that would be a function of two properties plus the number of components or number of moles of each of my components. So I've chosen here to indicate it as temperature and pressure but it could be any two properties. I also could have the specific U value, which is the intensive version of U, and I'm going to designate that with an underscore. And again, that would be a function of my two intensive properties, T and P, as well as the mole fractions of the first C minus 1 of the components. Now I don't need to have that Cth component because the sum of the x's will equal 1. So that actually does not add any additional information. Now if I just kind of naively thought about it, what I would probably say is I think that U would be just figure out how much specific U is for each of my components, and then multiply by how much of each of those components I have. And if I added those up, that ought to be U, right? But sadly, that isn't the case. If we look <coughs> at some experimental results that people have gathered over time, we have several of these. Let's start by looking at this diagram 3. <coughs> this is the weight percentage of H2SO4 as a function of enthalpy. And what we see is that the enthalpy changes <clears throat> not linearly, but rather dramatically for various isotherms as I change my weight fraction of H2SO4. <clears throat> if I look at these diagrams, these are going to introduce a new quantity that we'll just call the enthalpy change or volume change or whatever property change for a mixture. So it's the change of mixing. And here we're looking at, in this graph, this is enthalpy change of mixing for benzene with a variety of aroma aromatic fluorocarbons. That's hard to say. <coughs> what you should note is that when I'm at pure substances, we have zero delta H of mixing. But as I change the composition, this is going to go through some variation. And it might be a negative change, and it might be a positive change. And that's going to depend upon the specific chemicals. And here we're showing volume change on mixing. And this is looking at methyl formate with either methanol or ethanol. And in one case, the methanol or yeah, the ethanol is going to decrease the volume of the mixture. And in the other case, it's going to end up increasing the volume of the mixture. Ultimately, we'd like to be able to predict this behavior from, um, you know, things that we understand. And we'd like to have some sort of mathematical way of explaining all of this seemingly bizarre behavior. So what's going to happen is I mix things together and in reality molecules interact with each other. The reason our properties are so different, we can't just predict them from something simple like an ideal gas law, is because molecules interact with each other. And when I have molecules of different species, they interact in unpredictable ways. 
So if I had a room full of people and suddenly I released a bunch of kittens in the room, probably a lot of the people would flock over and go want to hug and grab and pick up and pet a kitten. And others would be terrified and run to the other side. So we would have a wide variety of reactions to those kittens. It would change how the chemicals are behaving in the space. <clears throat> this is what we're trying to quantify here, is this change of behavior when we introduce a new type of species, a new set of molecules. So we're going to do this by defining a mixing property Delta U of mixing, in this case, is the U that you actually have for your species compared to what you would have gotten in that perfect world. Just taking the pure internal energies of each species and adding all of those up. Okay? Now, if I do have something where the molecules are not going to interact, Delta U of mixing will end up being zero. I can do this for any of these other thermodynamic properties. So in the graphs we just looked at, we had delta H of mixing, where I take the actual measured H for the mixture and subtract off what I would have gotten for the H's as pure components mixing those. Or delta V of mixing is a similar thing for volumes. Let's begin by calling this property just M. Okay, so we have internal energy, we looked at H, we've looked at V, but it could have also been Helmholtz energy A, or Gibbs energy G, or entropy S. And I don't want to have to rederive all of this stuff for every possibility of energy function or thermodynamic property, so we'll just call it M. Note in our textbook they use theta. M is easier to type. So if we want to know how M for the mixture changes and I, as I add just a little bit of I, I'm going to need to do this in terms of the solution property, which is just going to be the UHA, G, V, S, whatever, and the property of the pure individual species. And I'm going to indicate those using subscripts I for each species I. A partial molar property of the species is simply by definition how the extensive quantity M, or N times the number of moles times the intensive property M, so how the extensive property M changes if I were to add just a teeny bit of species I and I held everything else constant. I'm going to keep the temperature constant, the pressure constant, and the number of moles of all of those other species. I'm going to keep them constant. I'm going to drop one extra kitten into the room. This would be my partial molar property. <clears throat> so what happens is the real world vision uh, version of that equation that I started out with for a perfect world, well, I can instead of saying that the specific M is the sum of Xi times the pure Mi's, instead what really happens? The specific M for the mixture is going to be the sum of the mole fractions times these partial molar properties for each of the species. So in our next lesson, we're going to come in and we're going to look and see how we can use this partial molar property in order to get some useful results. Thank you for your time.